It's the Frequently Asked Questions podcast, Fuzzy and Quincy. Yes, sir. Oh, Fuzz, today? First, look, can we tell everybody where we at? Oh, we in the A. We in, a, a, in the A, not the A, Atlanta Braves yeah. champions, yeah. Atlanta. Yeah, but Matt Ryan from the Falcons, he he's from Philly. I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say, I don't, I don't, I don't I just to say after that, I don't know what to offer yeah. on the sports <laughs> side, so. I'm just, yeah. Hey, yo, and if you guys just uh, tuning in, make sure yeah. you guys go to our YouTube page. Yep. Subscribe, Fuzzy and Quincy. Yeah. Frequently asked questions. Make sure y'all tap in on wherever you listen to our podcast. Shout out to Spotify, Apple, uh, Apple Podcast, etc. Yes. But listen, we in the A, and we were the A Town legend. Nah, this is. I mean, we the. This is the Fuzz. epitome let, of sonically. Let me uh, Atlanta. Let me let me say a couple of uh, uh, records that this guy has oh, been man, a part of. We up. have time though. We don't. We just we're gonna skim I'm through. I'm saying it's a lot. It's a long list. So fresh, so clean. Oh, Outcast. classic. Outcast. Uh, don't let go. In Vogue. Waterfalls. TLC. Man. Saturday. Ludicrous, which I just found out today. Cell yeah, therapy. Chicky, chicky, chicky. Ooh, ooh. I love that song. You know what Goody I mean? Mob. Southern playlistic. Cadillac music. Outcast. Mm -hmm. Blackberry molasses. Mister. I didn't Mister. know he did that. Man. I didn't know they did Man. that. That's that's a, that was a, a classic. Uh, I mean, though, I mean, we got Bobby V. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's when he was. Yeah, he probably had another name uh, yeah, at the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, she sure said, Luda, uh, Curtis Mayfield. We're, we're, I mean, it's just so many. We have the legendary Rico Wade Hello. from Organized Ooh. Noise, man. Yes, yes, yes. Thank yes, you, yes, brother. Yes, yes. And yes, you are in Atlanta, the home of the World Series champion, Atlanta Braves. Listen, man. Yeah. Matty Ice is from Philly. Come talk to him. That's, that's A. We love Matty Ice, regardless of what they say. Yeah. We love Matty Ice, yes, yes. And we love our Falcons, like but our Braves and our Georgia Bulldogs are number one right now. So, you know, it's a good time in Atlanta, right? You know what I'm saying? Because we used to be in the blunt of the joke or whatever, I don't know, why? you know what I'm saying? But, you know, we strong. That just shows our perseverance here. Yeah. yeah. This is actually the home of Martin Luther King. That's our strongest um, our strongest um, um, thing. Uh, uh, positive like, figure. Positive, yeah, yeah just, just the fact of being a black city. Like, I used to call Washington, D.C., the chocolate city. Atlanta is the place that when um before people came to Freaknik, they didn't realize that black people had so much freedom. Mm. Yeah, no, it was a it was a uh, in the south in the south. I read this book uh, on this. Uh, he was he was from Atlanta and he was doing like a lot of construction deals. He built a lot of stuff. I think his name was um, H J Howard. Oh um, man, Her Herman Her Herman Ru um, Herman Russell Herman Russell H J Russell like a yeah. beast yeah. a beast back in the day. Yeah, yes, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we're also with a beast. From back in the day, right man. now in the future, Rico Wade, man, this is this is a pleasure, man, to have hey, you on here. First hey, of all, thank you, bro. Oh man, I appreciate it, man. And it's not just Rico Wade; it's organized noise. Yes. I'm just a mouthpiece. I just like to talk. And since we're going through the frequently asked questions, we're gonna talk gonna, about that. Yeah, you know I'm saying, but yeah, but organized noise is um, we the we the the, the, the production company, we the Dr. Dre of the West Coast, we are the RZA of the East Coast. Even though the East Coast is more than just RZA, you know what I'm saying. We always give a lot of credit to RZA because of him putting together the Wu-Tang Clan and us having something kind of like to, to see what the Dungeon Family was. Right. Like knowing that, but understanding that, damn, that works. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That works where everybody, especially not putting everybody at the same label. So that's the main storyline is that Outkast and Goody Mob, we brought through Organized Noise and we had at LaFace Records. But what we noticed with RZA and Wu-Tang was the story of having Method Man, having um, Method Man, on Def Jam, have an old dirty bastard yeah. on Electra, you know, getting those different moguls behind your um, behind your brand though, because it's all Wu Tang. So yeah. with any one of them promoting, they promoting Wu Tang, and not to mention Steve Rifkin got it first. Yeah, uh, he got so it. You, so you got that from RZA, the yeah. Blueprint. I mean, I, I yeah, I got to be honest, RZA is a brother, and I saw that. Not not that I purposely got it, but I saw that it worked. RZA did it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. It worked. I mean, like he did it. Like, like I don't have to bring all these artists to this one label. I think we should spread it out. Right. Let them all get their own. Because at the end of the day, when Wu Tang came out, Method Man is all you cared about when he first came he was out. A star. You saw he was a star. Method Man, come on. He had, he had the commercial part. Music was changing. Yeah. Wu Tang was keeping New York boots, razor blades. They was keeping that alive. Yeah. Niggas was like we. Like how, how L.A. was like, either you game banging or in New York, either you got razor blades, and that ain't what music was gonna be. Right, you was gonna. Have, that's who your. That's your heritage. That's yeah. who you are, and that makes us respect you. Yeah. But the South was starting to come with like, cause y'all thought we were just booty shaking, and it was just gonna be asses and um and niggas talking about throw it up. But really, we want we want to show that we had a, a hip hop culture, and but by doing that, it showed life. 
And then with Dr. Dre them, when they started doing the chronic, it showed life. With Tupac, they were showing life, not just the gang. Let me tell you, that's why I think I listen to Outkast or y'all music different because it sound, sonically y'all had, you had a West Coast sound yes. to me. So I'm not saying the, the, the not the Moog or it was just live instruments. The like y'all was it was full. Yes, and I'm like in L. A. We're like oh they 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 cracking like, so I got I understood what that was sonically and not understanding <laughs> what it was not saying it was any compare you couldn't compare. Well, it, no, but, but but it was something that we saw as well. We felt like DJ Quick. These are idols. Come I'm on, saying, man, talk we, that talk. Uh, no, we saw that <laughs> DJ Quick. DJ Quick. Even some days I was like, was that before Dr. Dre? And you can't be before Dr. Dre because he was doing, you know, the um, the, uh, before you turn off the lights. He was yeah. writing music or right, 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 whatever. Class but Quick yeah. most definitely was was like showing you that he get down. He get down with the music. So that's what you was listening to in Atlanta? Yes. You listening to a lot of... We were as organized. You know, we was listening to Nirvana. We was listening to... Okay. Come on. We was like, like that's why Outkast did not become what it became without us being very aware of what was bubbling everywhere. Yeah. Like when we was listening to Tupac at first, we were saying, people gonna really love this guy when he stopped fucking his vocals up. Uh, he, was, he was doubling in his vocals all the time. He had all, he had all this crazy, and the, the mixes went always right. But but that round and round, that was a hit. It was yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shock G, shout out to Shock G. God bless you. You a know. real, you, 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 know you was a real, you was studying. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. I was on it, and we were on it, because my partners is like, but that's why we felt like, South has something to say. It wasn't just because of we because when he yeah. said that, that was a tearjerker. Bro, I left. Was, the, listen, I left out of the Source Awards when that when that happened because I thought all hell was about to break loose. You, I was, <laughs> I was so. And guess what? That's why I know you was there. Go I ahead was there. Your I was. You know what I'm saying? I was so. Was Death Row open? If we talking about the Source Death Awards, Death Row had the shits going they all night. Up, they opened all up night. the show with the shits <laughs> and DJ Quick, Quick was with him. Yeah, Tupac every, was locked up. The Quick was with him. But Pyro Death, 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 Death Row opened it up. Everybody come out the jail cell. Then I'm like, oh, I, this, I'm throwing the West Coast up. I'm like, man, I'm wearing my Dickies, K-Swiss. I'm representing. I'm in New York. So then when all that shit happened between Suge making his speech, I'm like, oh, the, and the energy just got really yeah. dark. Am I right? Yeah. Then It was nasty. It was nasty. Then when Suge Outkast did hit the stage, it was like they had I'm like, and I understood what that energy was. I'm like, I'm going to get the fuck up out of here because it's about to be a brawl up in this piece. Man. I had to walk out with Fat Joe and the Beat Nuts. My <laughs> <laughs> Mob deep, and I un- I didn't understand that night. Yeah, but I you know what I'm saying the whole time the show going, I'm turning around looking because I'm thinking about the West Coast New York vibe. So at this point, I'm even sympathetic to the, to the East Coast. Yeah, Y'all, them niggas ain't got enough awards yet. Mm, no. So when when the Mob Deep oh. and the Outcast thing came up, Outcast it wasn't the, the crowd booing. It was Mob Deep the buddies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boo! Oh no! Nah. We never heard this. <laughs> yeah. So while we we in the crowd. I turn around and look at a section of about 200 people. I turn yeah. around, turn up, just look, just looking at them like, 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 fuck, y'all want to do something? But thinking like, nigga, we don't want to do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's eight of us in yeah. there. It's eight of us. But at that point, I'm telling Goody Mob, go on stage with Outkast. Because I already know, like, yeah, just to we beef it outnumbered. Up. I don't, I'm saying, I want us to be humble and take the award, but we just won some and it's hostile in here right now. And Biggie ain't even came up and performed. Yeah, Jay. Did Biggie nothing. calmed it down, but that's when we snuck out. I, you, know I, I, you know what I mean? But now you snuck out, but it's like, it's real. It's like you literally, you performing at Times Square, wherever it's at, and you walk out the door, you own Times Square. I mean, you performing wherever the venue it was, and you walk outside. So that's how I was like, like how he was thinking, I was like, man. Attention. It's, it's for the jump. It's for the go. Yeah. But I didn't think it was going to go in. Now I just felt like celebrities wouldn't go. It was celebrities in the crowd. Yeah, it was. I, I didn't even go on stage. So everybody walked out the door normal. It wasn't like normal people in there. It wasn't like yeah. customers in there. This was a, 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 a. It was the Source Awards. Yes, it was, yeah. it, it was like hip hop mecca, mecca everywhere. Yeah, Dave. Me- it's all the people that's in the business. Yeah. This is not regular fans. But you understand, Mob Deep was running but, radio waves. In New yeah, the York. album was the, the album was crazy. But you know, also you got to look at like what you were saying at that time. You, y'all had to kind of be like, I know y'all going through y'all stuff, but look, we here, dog. Yeah, we here. We made yeah. it here, so really I'm proud. But I was a little embarrassed when I felt the little booze, but I was happy that we won. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm yeah. saying? You were conflicted. Yeah, I was conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but I knew what who we were. So I was like, Goody Mob, y'all don't know who they was. And I'm like, go, go. Y'all, y'all older, big and Dre 17, 18, wow. kids. Y'all 19, 20. Right. 
go on stage with them niggas or whatever, just in case some backstage, um, or whatever. Like, we just gonna be, we, we, we ain't finna be embarrassed yeah, out yeah, here. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. they gonna wanna go to scrap and something gonna happen, we want it to be strong. Right. So when, when Dre got up there, man, it's so monumental, it's so funny. Cause um, Cool Joy Gibbs said, go, go ahead, little dirty, go ahead, little shouty, like, like, get it off your chest. And I can hear Dre voice. He was cracking. <laughs> yeah. But he was mad. He thought he was hurt. He was about to cry. Yeah. yeah. And shit was like, that's how that's why that statement is so big. Cause y'all y'all work so hard, hard to get to that point. It's like, then you fight, and you fight, y'all fighting. Yeah. We just trying to make it in the business. And now the mama and the daddy fighting. Yeah. Then it wasn't even a LA is the yeah. mama. New York is the daddy. We learned hip hop from here. We got we grew, we were cultivated from California. They love music like we love music in the South. Love it. Dre had to include hip hop in his music, but it was the best music going. Because he included everything. Organized noise is everything. That's why when Jimmy I mean put me and Dre together, it was like, we still cool. Like, I could probably still, you know what I'm saying? But we didn't, yeah. get, didn't get to work together. But the respect, it was it was hard for me to be able to tell Dre what was wrong when he was doing Aftermath. But it was, that was my job. I'm the one who was there who injected that honesty with, like, ain't nothing wrong, Dre. But that, 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 no, nah, no, nah, this is you. Do this, Hold do on. This. Let's go. We, 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 we got, we got, got so rewind. much. But, yeah, but, yeah, but we got to rewind. But when when were you linked up with Dr. Dre? Interscope. Interscope like, Jimmy Iovine signed Okay. Us. Jimmy I mean, well, you know what I'm saying? Jimmy Iovine brought us in to do a big deal before before Dre had Eminem. Eminem was being brought into the building. So I'm a, I'm even You're early. I'm, I'm not a part of that, but we all, he, he got Teddy Riley, Dr. Dre, Organized, no. These wow. are his, his babies. Then R. Kelly, he's, he he only was dealing with crews. He was just the dealing whole. With the, I want. Yeah. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take you away from producing from anybody else. But that's where we we already had Outkast established or whatever. So it was like they thought we was gonna take Outkast over there too. That was the and L. A. Reid was like, just don't do that. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm thinking like, I can what? do. I can do that. I never thought I. I never thought that was in the questions. Taking a like, nigga, we done made money. We done built something. I, I wouldn't dare take that. I just thought that I just graduated to go do it again with somebody else. Right. But but, but the business, they were looking like, oh, no. With this man right here, Jimmy Iovine, he might come and buy the face. Wow. <laughs> like, and that's what he was. And eventually it happened. Eventually they ended up getting yeah, all that shit yeah, and putting yeah, 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 it to yeah. one or whatever. So, um, but that particular day at whatever with the source of it was like you were saying, everybody was, it was just a powerful, it was a very, very powerful moment because you were seeing New York and L.A. beef. And not knowing that Big and Tupac was going to die from it later. Yeah. Not knowing, but it really, as a, if you was a child, which I always say that Atlanta is to New York. Whenever they praise us, I would be like, L.A. is the mama. New York is the father. We're the product of it. Mm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. We're That's the child. such a great yeah, description. We're, we're the child. So when we grew up, of course, you see, like, the balance where you're like, man, Atlanta is the place. But Atlanta is just the hub. It's, it's the producers. It's still come on. You still got to go to L.A. You still got to go. Like it's still, you still got to go to L.A. And, and you still got to go to New York, or you don't understand. Y'all in the middle. Yes, you do, but it's like for me, like a passage to becoming great. Me, me and my partners, we would go spend weeks in New York, get a hotel room, and yes, it's a it's it's, it's a it's a beautiful passage. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it ain't like we had to go go up there struggling. Mm -hmm. We went up there with a budget. So, but we spent our money instead of going to the Shake Club. Let's go, let's go to New York. Let's, let's soak it up. Like, let's go mix Outkast's first album in New York. Let's go up in, in these New York big buildings. Let's, let's, get, let's go through the same bullshit, but we can't get a cab to pick us up at uh -huh. 5 o'clock in the morning. Right, right. And we got to walk from 20-something street all the way back up to our 50-something street hotels. But we just we're working on that. That's a struggle we had, dealing with the same kind of Black problems, knowing that nobody, you're in New York, but you're still a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, you still, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, but they, 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 we supposedly came so far, but but the racism, not even white and black. This is not, this is That's international. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? This is people worried about getting robbed or whatever. So we couldn't stay, we couldn't frequent Brooklyn and Queens and other places because we couldn't get there from Manhattan. Wow. In, in New York, they don't really drive. Nobody. So everybody you see, they only bring their cars out. Since, see, I'm saying my buddies got this nice car. Well, I don't drive my car to the city. Nah. <laughs> Them cabbies are temp. So do, those experiences, to me, was what got me. So, so I want my, basically, I want my all my future. Because future is my nephew. He's, he's my, my little cousin. And he's the leader of this young generation. So he knows how important hip-hop is, how important melody is, and how important 
songs. He are. saw this growing up. Then he saw it. Yeah, he was in the dungeon. We got listen. We yeah, it's so it's so we, much so many layers with, to with Rico. Let, let's um, let's take it back to the beginning. Yeah, I you know I, I remember seeing that you know you would you would get music or get records from New York. Yeah. Like you would you would see where it was sampled from. And when I think of Dr. Dre, I think of you know you think of Parliament Funkadelic, yes, right? Yeah, like yeah, that's sure. like the derivative. Who 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 would you say Your you DNA. looked at? It was like, all right, this is my DNA. This yeah. is who I'm taking my music from and, and, and flipping. Well, to be very honest, like I said, Yoda. We all, like you said, we should look at the back of records before. But this is before we was making great records. We were trying to figure out because the first thing you got to be is not looking at these guys, these guys like gods. Because you do, you looking like how to like premier any Marley Mall, any producer, anyone who was leading a revolution, like. Marley Marr, by him producing all the Juice Crew stuff, yeah. um, you would go back and you would listen to the records. You'd be like, damn, he changed the snare. Okay, this is a different record from this one because the drum sounds are different. The melodies and the, and the creativity, you were limited because you could tell what machines they was working on. Okay, that's the SB12. And then you can hear when it got it. So we was a part of the era when the MPC came on. So the, the, so you the, saw the difference between SB1200 and yes, the MP. Yes, SB12 was all the great. ASR. And then when the MP, ASR10s. Like, but when the MPC came along, a new flock of producers were born. That's yeah, when we yeah. were born because now it's a sound that's a little bit cleaner than the SB12, and and um, but you can do more as far as melody wise. Mm. New York hadn't really started doing as much melody wise. We we showed them the way because they was sticking to the Bible, to the code. You only use this much of a sample and making it creative and making it creative. Wow, that was that's New York. So we come from that. Kanye West come from that. Yeah. Um, just ble- just Blaze. All these people that can chop up a sample. Because mm. I like to say sometimes, oh, Kanye, you got that shit from organized noise. How you like to say somebody got it from you? Somebody take something from you? We were chopping up samples and, and breaking them up and making them in songs before a lot. RZA was doing it with, with TV shows or whatever. So all of us got it from the original part of hip hop. But the SB12, when you only could use a point one of a sample, NPC gave us longer sample time. To it now, you can that's go. Where you came, so to, that's where you yeah, came in at. But that's where Puffy come in at, who abused it. Puff, and Puff, ran with and it. Puffy, my, I'm closer to Puffy than anybody else. But okay. I just mentioned. He ran with it, though. He he just <laughs> said, loop that whole motherfucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using the New York thing. I don't want to use the boom to take this bit and that yeah. bit. And guess what? He started winning with that shit. So niggas start rushing. Jermaine Dupree, Puffy, we just go, money ain't a thing. Killed yeah. it. It's a banger. Money ain't a thing. But he didn't take pieces. He caught something before anybody else could. Now, when he did crisscross jump, he was taking pieces. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. He was flipping shit. But when you got into money and the thing, you start being like, fuck that. That's working. Just taking. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm just going to take the whole. Yeah. So that's when the game got a little, you know, it didn't get bad. It was just that's when people got confused or people did, that didn't know, didn't understand what New York brought. So New York is the. Like we love Dr. Dre, but Dr. Dre had to go to look at how New York, New York, that boom bap. Oh no, Dre boom, definitely boom, influenced. The boom bap is what that influences all of us. Just yeah. so happened we are Southern producers. So yes, we got Whirlisters, B3 organs, mm. the church sound, soulful all that stuff, stuff, all that soulful shit. That's in the South. You can't, you know what I'm saying? That's come from, that's the South. You see that anywhere. You walk into a little school. You know, you get you go to a pawn shop. Man, that's a Whirlister. How would you, oh, give me $50. Taking it. Stop. I go around the city, buy, buy, buy every last one of them. <laughs> go, go around the city, find, hey, man, go get every one. Don't let nobody else get one. So I getting mean like that. I don't want nobody else to get one. This is how I sound. Go, go get all the B3. Let's go get everything. Who, who was Organize the, the noise. What was the first song that you heard that was like, these they they taking a page out of my book? Um, and you were pissed. Like, how they dare, how dare they, they? They biting. Jermaine. I just can't. <laughs> no, nah, but Jermaine automatically was like, JD J. influenced, he's influenced but, but, by but, a lot. But but no, but when I say that, that's a friendly thing. Because he was in the studio working with us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We was he had almost almost signed us. We Mike, Michael Malden, his father, wow. came in that we, we was gonna all be part of So So Deaf. Organized Noise would have been a part of So So Deaf or whatever, but 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 I, I think he, I mean it was on though. I'm not gonna I, I feel, feel like he, the, that's his his father, father felt like his father was smart for bringing us in because his father managed brick. Sleepy Brown, his father was in Brick. What? So this is an old favor. His father managed the band. He was like, oh, my son, yeah, you, you was a kid on the side of, you and my son, i bring you in too. But then it was probably, I think it was just not enough attention to go around. Right. Probably at that time or whatever, not enough attention. So 
So when I say Jermaine, I don't mean he literally no, I get it. bit us. I just mean like we did Waterfalls. We had this bass player. Two days later, that same bass player who played on Waterfalls. And so so there. What playing on Brad? <laughs> I was like, what? No. <laughs> playing on the Brad album. Yeah, that's like, funny. But that's just the, yeah. but that's just the that's the business. So so it wasn't like but but. I did. Obviously, I felt some kind of way. I brought that shit up just then. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it touched me. Let, so, me yeah. <laughs> let me ask a question for our younger listeners. As you know, let's we'll do a deep dive. Explain who came up with organized noise and who is organized noise. Wow, that's a good one, and it's an easy one. Okay, organized noise was it's so funny that we end up producing in Vogue, but I, we had a senior group, the girl senior group that we wanted to do. Called them organized noise because I was thinking like organized crime. Mm, okay, we're gonna put it on girls because they were girls, so we got to make it hard. Let's, but we hard, so we hard, so we organize the noise. Like so, but they're supposed to be these girls. They were, they were girls singing group. Anybody f- that we know that was Don't, nobody ended up being oh. famous or whatever. I know one girl named Tammy. She, she would love to hear her name, Tammy. Where she had uh, the uh, does she end up having kids? Last time I saw I was at an AAU event. My sons. Was before I mean, was um was playing basketball. So she's not working at Magic or nothing like no, that. No, 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 no. She, 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 she man, she, she was a college graduate. She went. I'm saying these girls ended up going. They was young. They was in high school when we was trying to do it. Mm-hmm. And once we didn't do them, shit, we we was. We, I ended up taking the name. I, said, wow. I took it back. Hey, the name work. I'm a music. I said, this name banging though. It didn't work out with them. But the, and then the guy who's produced who, whose idea it was as well, Joseph Karn. Okay, that's Doug and Gene Karn's son. And that's Doug. Gene Carr. Yeah, just yes, the famous jazz singer. Wow. And this is where I met my partner, Ray, how we still formed the organized noise. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's some thing. Y'all, I mean, I know y'all just request it. Go to your local TV channels and just start requesting it because it's coming. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the coming. story. The organized it's coming. noise story. It's coming. Okay, we got to talk about that a little yes, later. It's coming. Man, so it's you, Ray, and, and Sleepy. Sleepy. Yep. All right, so. Shout we, to Sleepy. We, we, you know, things are so commercial now. We're seeing all these different TV shows out. Um, we see y'all on Airbnb, like the dungeon. Oh, right. The dungeon. The dungeon. We try to get it. It's it's booked. I know. I've been trying. See, we got two dungeons. See, okay. We got, but the other one, I can't get it right now. I lost it in the, in the um, what's the name? But it's like now it's so valuable that all our, anything that got our name on it, we want to, we, we need to have it right Whose now. Whose house was it originally? Yeah. The original 1907 Lakewood house was my mom's. It's my house. It, well, actually, the owner was Eldrin Bell, the police commissioner. <laughs> People don't know how connected Rico Wade was, man. So you, you my connected to the streets and the streets. Yes, yeah, yeah. because and we didn't even just to the streets and the streets. It was because Elgin Bell was one of them people that looked out for the black young. I was a ghetto black kid, mm. so I I could always make those little programs when they be like, "Let's help him. Let's help this kid." Is that so right? I was, I was always it. looked at as somebody that I was smart. I mean, I was. I mean, I, my father wasn't around. I mean, I mean, he he around now or whatever. But, but he went around when I was younger. And my mother was one of those single black hero moms that, that didn't really didn't want no help from nobody else and didn't really want a lot from the government. So she'd get food she stamps. She'd get food stamps whenever she needed them. I'd be like, Mom, what, what the food stamps? Oh, we ain't got them now. What? She's proud. <laughs> yeah, proud. Yeah. Get them when we need them, whatever. That kind of person. So it was, if it was 4-H camp, if it was her little, her little son got those opportunities, like, like, like football, whatever it was, she didn't have a problem with Letting people take me. <laughs> like, if some people, a group of people be like, huh, he's smart, we should, and we see you don't really have it. Mm. You buying, because she knew I was tough. She knew, like, you ain't gonna do that to him. He's gonna fuck you up. Right, 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 <laughs> so, right. So, by doing that, I always believed in um, the community. So, it just so happened that we was in a situation where we got put out of those apartments. We were living on Delow Drive when Outcast, Hitler, and Delow was the yeah. start of something good. We lived on Delow, 2377 Delow Drive in some apartments. And because of us having rehearsals, working on Music, the neighbors complain, say like that. So we doing got, too much. Yeah, we doing too much. So we got put out or whatever. And um, and when we get put out, pe- people that loved and believed in me said, Rico, I talked to Eldrin. I told him your situation or whatever. And he said he got a property, a rental property, that if you can give him the first month or whatever, he can move you in. Or whatever. So it's still about money. It was first and last month. And I was like, yeah, I got it. Back so we're going to be in the basement. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so now we got the dungeon. And, and the dungeon has this. It's, it's a brick house, mm-hmm. but it has an unfinished. When you go through the kitchen, open the door, these, these wood stairs, then this red clay dirt. But half of it is no, half of it's red clay dirt, and the other half of it is dug out. And it's just like, and they already got a table down there. It's just kind of caught where we like, man, yeah, put the equipment down here. We was concerned about the dust because mm-hmm. back then we, we was using three point five floppy disks. 
So it was like sometimes the disc went low. So we start the best when we bought a case, start storing the, the, the disc somewhere else. Damn. It felt like the dungeon. How was, old were you? At that time, I was probably, because um, I met Outkast when they were 15. <sighs> and I was um, about 17, 18 when I met them. They got By the time that we got them a deal, I was 21. So um, we moved into that house. I was already out of high school. I was 18. I spent most of my high school at Lakewood, but my sister them had to finish their high school at the dungeon, but they had to catch the Marta bus back to where we were staying. Or so all y'all was just trying to figure it out at a young age? Yes, just figure it out right before college time or whatever. My outcasts were young enough to not. See, once you get to 18, you got to really figure it out. Right. Because you got to go to college, go to military, you got to do something. Yeah. But I got to the point where I figured out, you know what, I don't know if I'm going to be in a singing group. I don't know if that's if I need to be doing that because I'm not all can't sing. But I see that I am a leader of Orchestra. men. I'm a leader of mm-hmm. men that, that needs this. Like, like not the leadership as much as the the, um, the cheerleader. Because back then it was kind of like you, the manager was a cheerleader. I'm just I'm the one with the pom-poms the hardest. I'm the one that's taking the embarrassment first. Like if somebody say, I'm the one that's going to, you shouldn't, what they say, you shouldn't be ringing your own bell. I was right. the bell. I was Did the you bell. know that that? This was a title. Like, did you know? Like, kids now know. Like, oh, I'm a producer. Yeah, I can be like that. Did you know that that was the title? You know what? It's funny. It wasn't a title, and even the manager mm-hmm. title wasn't a cool title to me because all them people were expendable. Got so, it. so what I did, what I did was that I'm gonna become a great family. Friend. I'm gonna, I'm a leader. They didn't say I was a leader then, but, but, I I showed leadership qualities. If I got some money, or if I could get my hands on some money. I'm going to go get food for everybody. And I'm going to do it in a way because I've been shopping for my family. So I know how to get stuff to where we can get everybody straight. Well, I might cook some spaghetti. Nobody ain't got to ask. But I know niggas we ain't ate. Mm. And, and some of y'all, some of us sneaking off eating, going to get you a little $3 <laughs> meal because that's what you got. But I ain't, ain't, But it's not fair for somebody to be, I'm going to get a piece of your burger. All oh, that shit is just so bummish and so crap. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got your little five dollars and go get some food, just don't be eating it in front of people. You know what I'm saying? You need to go eat your food, so we we'll scarf it down in the car. But we family. Because we family. So but whenever I, at this house right here, I'm going to go get a 50 piece. I'm going to go get a whatever. And I'm going to make sure everybody grab a little something because I know we ain't really eating. So is that, is that how you took that same mentality on the business side? Yes, yeah, so it made sure everybody ate. So when it came down to like, the music was like, Big and Dre, because the first ones who got on was Parental Advisory, PA. Because first of all, TLC, I'm, I'm, I'm Lisa. I met Lisa, and I'm, I knew Tion. Tion. T buys on, and that's why I hate TLC story. The, the little movie they put out, yeah. that shit was horrible because Tion is so important to Very. Dungeon family. Very important, and they didn't talk about that. You know how cool she is. Yeah. She was a, she was the girl amongst dudes. Ain't nobody fucked her. Mm. You know what I'm saying this is my sister. This is the person that really turned me on to the skating rink. Told me you need to go to the skating rink. I would have never met. She introduced me to Sleepy. Wow. So she really is. She really set me off, but it's like y'all niggas wrote me out y'all story. Wow. <laughs> but but that but me and her cool. Like we are so cool. But but you know I'm to sell something. I, and I'm dealing with that now with our stories. People want to tell you what's important. They want they want future to be at the dungeon with outcasts with them. But it didn't happen like that. So he yeah. just said it started off with PA. We had KP on. Yeah, KP. And that's our. That's KP. listen. That's our. That's our guy. KP. Yeah. And you know I, we called KP. I said, hey man. We got Rico coming. He said, hey, man, just talk to him. Yeah. He said, so, talk about the green blazer. No, the, the blue blazer. Blue blazer, yeah. It's black, it's black and grad, the blazer. <laughs> but, but, but if that was during the time when, because like with PA, they came to me, because PA wasn't, it was it was KP and Mellow. Mm-hmm. But the first drum machine we got was, because back then, like I said, we had, I was managing a singing group, which was Sleepy, Marquez, who wrote Waterfalls. Damn. Then Mellow wanted me to manage them. Which I ain't never had no contracts on none of these people. Ain't nobody gave me no money for nothing. Wow. But, but what management meant was, you talk for us, right? You do, you rep us. You represent us. You represent us. So like you go talk to the people about the show. You talk to. So KP said, "Hey Rico, my uncle Sweepy, he believes in us, but he are he's my uncle, so he's not gonna give me some money to do what we're doing. But if you talk to him, he'll give you." The money to get to get us going. Wow! And, and, and I did. He gave, he gave us the money by that first MPC. That was like three or four thousand. So that's what I'm saying. To get into the music game, then ninety. That's a lot of money. yeah. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money now. That's a lot of money now. Yeah, yeah, the sweet for, for, whatever Sweepy was doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for, for a drum machine, so that was an investment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. rent rent at that time at my mother's apartment, four hundred a month. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? So a, that's like a that's like, like a year. year. A year, like a year, you get worth yeah, of rent. Right. Yeah, so like, 
at that point, um, that was great. And, and, and our second drum machine, Big Rude Mama, bought because of the fact that, like, the little shit, that's why it's going to be in the movie. We was, the drum, you can't, it's one drum machine. You can't, everybody wants to, so now Ray was the main person working on the drum machine, but Sleepy wants to work on it sometimes, and um, KP and Melo, because we really, I'm managing all of them, so really, we, he doing all of them, but at this particular moment, he was doing a little too much on, on Sleepy, on You Boys, and not enough on PA. You Boys? Yeah, yeah, not enough on PA, and it was like, that That became a moment when it was like, well, we want the drum machine over here with us for a second. Like, hey, man, we got to split. Yeah, so, so now we got our own. Got to rent it to each other. Yes, yeah, so well, we got our own New York. T- it's like, so, like, this is going to be very interesting. Like I said, when when when, when PA got their they record deal, it was because of TLC that I put together. Like, I took Tion and Lisa to this audition to be in this group. What? Yeah, I took Tion and Lisa to be. How did you know Tion? Like Tion was because she moved. Just so happened she moved on the low drive. What? A new girl on my my neighborhood. I'm on Noah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on Noah. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? I'm on Noah. That's yeah. my job. I got to know her. Yeah. So, but this one right here was a little more intimidating because she was a couple years older and she was uh, she was a cutie. She was fly. She had the blue contacts in. Oh, she was fly. She would ghetto ghetto fly with, and she knew all two short lyrics uh-huh. better than me. She could rap uh-huh. them up. She'd be rapping rap lyrics. Just walking around. I'm like, what? Who's that? She's like, oh, you ain't heard that? Oh, cuss word. Yeah. But she be doing it. She be acting it out. And I'm thinking like, man. So that's when the opportunity came when um when um Ian Burke hit me and said, hey, Reek, I'm trying to put together a female BBD. Woo! Woo! I want wow. a female BBD. Wow. You already had it. Do you know any girls? That do I? Do I? QT, which is Lisa. Okay. But she had on these tight ass fans, fine as hell, beautiful. And she could rap. From Philly. From this Philly. One. From Philly. Come on. From yes, come Philly. on. Come on. Facts. Come on. Had some facts from Philly. With, no, the, gr- with the girls high. <laughs> Listen, he has with the girls high. Time. It's cool. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm about to get my Compton off, but go ahead. <laughs> no, no, but, 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 but this is how that even happened. This guy named Lorenzo, he was a singer. His father, um, um, Thomas Mued, his daughter, Ty Mued, she reached out to Sleepy Brown, said, we, we need some background dancers for Lorenzo. Lorenzo got one dancer, this girl named QT. So me and Sleepy go dancing with her. We meet the girl. The manager like, man, we finna get rid of her, man. Today ain't it. We don't want that look no more. We want the Bobby Brown look. One guy, two. I mean, one one singer, two guys. Man, man, so, yeah. so they telling us, they 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 telling us, y'all y'all is the new. I congrats. We want y'all to work with us. We finna get rid of her. And I'm looking at her. They not telling her. She not in the room. Uh, they talk telling behind the back that she gone. But I'm looking at her like, wow, are we getting rid of her? I just met her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hell no. Like, I'm trying to figure out a way to keep her around. But but they got rid of her, and I just befriended her. I said, hey, sorry. And basically, like, we just took your job. But I'm like, man. Check this out. You know, so I, you know I'm just, like, just just trying to holler at her. And, and then I did kind of catch her a little bit. So while, while I'm messing with her, the opportunity came up, and I just connected her. You know so, just, le- so you knew Left Eye because you got her fired. Yeah. Damn. I got her fired. You felt you, bad. You got I, got, f- I got her fired and felt bad, but I also thought she was fired. So, yes. so like you know the, the um the AL Cool J video um girl s- um, sucking on the lollipop around the way girl, yeah, girl. Yeah. look at that girl and look at left eye when she had her hair pulled back it, that was QT she was that girl from that video shoot and I was amazed I was like man if I make it you gonna make it <laughs> wow <laughs> so, and, so, so so you connected them too so I put Tia and Lisa together and 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 after that I didn't really see them anymore because they shit started bubbling up like they was working with Jermaine when that happened whatever. So, point being is that whenever they shot their first video, KP was like, yo, Re, we want to go to um to, to video shoot. So I ain't going to that video shoot. I ain't even talk to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, But I went mad, but I was just being funny. You was hating. Pop, just pop it. I was hating. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We're old now. We can sit there. <laughs> Facts. He still got a little heat in him. Yeah. <laughs> How dare that? How dare that? <laughs> so the audacity. <laughs> the audacity. <laughs> so so I'm at I'm at work, whatever. They go to the video shoot. KP end up in the video. So as he walk yeah, he, he walk on set, they like, oh, you're gonna be chilly boyfriend, baby, baby. They they hear Maurice's voice. It worked. It worked. The affiliation with your friends got us right all the way in. Wow. In fact, them was our folks, got them in. 
Pebbles signed KP, Melo, and Reese. Yeah. And and they came right to me, Sleepy, and Ray and said, Ray, we want y'all to produce the whole album. But they, mind you, I was their manager. And they said, oh, Rico, he can't manage us. Ooh. And I said, you know what? It was a win. Mm -hmm. We was going to produce it. But I did say, I'm going to go get me a group. Who'd you get? Come on, man. Come on. Outcast. You see what Man. you see what that chest say is shirt say <laughs> bro, bro. What all right, so you gotta give us this. What was going on in Atlanta at that time and and for you to think that y'all could do it, right? Because y'all are the start, you know, it's just a lot started with y'all. Like, I mean, you could look at New York, you could look at LA and like, man, we gotta go up there. But like, how do you say, all right, guys, we're gonna stick with it, we can make it happen? I really, I really like your line of your line of questioning. We're gonna have to keep this guy Frequently around. Frequently asked <laughs> questions, y'all. Like, nah, we, we not for real, because this is where other people come in. Dallas Austin. Dallas Austin was popping. He, I mean, he, he was the young, he was the next Rowdy. one coming up. It wasn't rap music, but but Boys the Men, ABC. Well, he did TLC. He was, he was already. Yeah, did this. Joyce Spinderella, Mr. DJ, and and Quiet as Kelp. I didn't find that out till later. Joyce, Fin Mr. DJ, that was he, cracking. That was cracking. He had did that. That's what made me kind of like go to the skating rink because Tion was like, you know, they got Dallas also. You know, he did that. You know, he go to MD. And we was going to we, like basically in our same high school circle. I'm like, what? Well, a so now the dope boys who you always look at. These are the JoJo little days. That the names that you want to follow. Now it's a guy named Dallas Austin that's 16, 17, and and wow. And 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 he preppy and he weird, like how we were, like how we could be. Either you're gonna be dope boy, or you want you could be fly. And we wanted to be fly, but in some areas I had to be dope boy. It wasn't cool just to be all the way little five points yet. Yeah. But Dallas was the leader of it. So like he had that already on lock. Yeah, yeah, that's who he was. Yeah. And, and he was having success, so you gotta follow what success is. Then he had the little BMW convertible. You remember that? Well, I remember it because he came and spoke to me that day at the skating rink. He said, where you get that cell phone? My cell phone was smaller than his. Oh, you was <laughs> the next The next week he had a cell phone smaller than mine. It's like he he came in with a regular cell phone, like a big one. I had one a little smaller. He said, oh. just he didn't speak to me for no other reason. Yeah. Where you get that cell phone? I said, oh, it's, it's an okay data. It's an okay data. I got this. Okay, next week he came back with some shit like a flip or something. <laughs> but so Dallas is a celebrity, somebody that we believed in and was good and was humble, was but, a good person. But anytime you called him, he would pick up for you. And Hell no, no. <laughs> I mean, back then I didn't have his number. I didn't want his number. <laughs> Got it. I didn't want his number. It wasn't even like it was like more like he was so busy. You would see him on TV. Now somebody say, "Man, Dallas going to the skating rink." Oh, I'm going to the skating rink tonight because you want to like a, like a reunion. He, he get he get like a kid. He don't get to hang out with us no more in high school. He don't get to hang out because he's he already he's a celebrity. So whenever he come around, it's a party because yeah. he don't he, he get to hang out once every two months. It's an event. It's an event. Talk, so yeah. but but in, the, but in between the time you see him, you done saw him on TV. Yeah. You done heard his song. Yeah, you see he, him. Put, he put in work. So that's what made me believe Atlanta was going places. And Jermaine Dupree, once again, I just crashed on him. He was a but made me believe. Because when he before he did Chris before he did crisscross, he was making independent noise with Itchy Bun. He was putting out <sighs> Silk Time Leather. He put out Javier and the Straight Jackers. He put out he was putting out artists that would look like copycats of other artists, yeah. but he still had the mold. And he still, a, a, he still was a, he still was he still was he still was holding his nuts. He Got still it. was a real one. He so was, you you seeing these? Dudes. I seeing people in Atlanta mm. doing their thing or whatever. So it was like, okay, I got big brothers. I got brothers who doing it. So we just got to do it original. That's where, where the original. It was easier to be original because because I saw people doing stuff and I was like, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be. You know what I'm saying we got to do it our way. And I and um and and with Sleepy being a, a pop kind of producer. I remember when they kind of compared him to Dallas one time. It hurt his feelings, which mm. which, which, which they shouldn't have, because he was playing just like Dallas, <laughs> and which Dallas was playing just like Teddy Rod. It's like it's that it was that new Jack sound. It's like yeah. that was a school to learn from. In hindsight, all y'all got better at what y'all was doing. Dallas ended up producing Shakira and all kinds of pop yeah, songs was, or whatever. Yeah, like, and big. to me, and and some of that Teddy Rod sound was Prince. I mean, you yeah. know what I'm saying? He had to, like they always flickering some of that stuff in there, whatever. But that's how you say when you think about New York, all the people that was popping in Atlanta. It wasn't no hip-hop problems like that. Which like We looked to New York for the hip-hop problems. We right. looked to L.A. for the West for musical genius. Yeah. But when it came down to locally, it was a couple of pop producers. Mm. Criss Cross had fucked around and sold five million. You know what I'm saying? Like the money, the yeah. white folks were starting to look down here. Like, yo. What else y'all got? Who else down here popping? 
So it was like you either can and do song and dance, mm-hmm. be a crossover group like that, or we felt like, um, I don't know, we believed in hip hop, man. We really believed that it was time for some, for a real Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? And when, when we met Big and Dre, they were some kids that really was want to be rappers, just like, you know what I'm saying? They was hip hop 15, just spitting bars. How'd you bars, need them though? Bars. Like, you know, PA gets signed, you can't. PA, P- PA gets signed, and guess what PA do? KP, thanks to old KP. KP over some girl house, then left his PA instrumental. He then left his instrumental tick tape over right. at the house. Right. Some girl, now next thing you know, Big Boy or Drake, they over at the girl house. And Big said, man, he heard the tape, said, man, where you get these kind of quality beats from? Ooh. These quality instrumentals. They done tracked us down. I said, man, this shit is magic, Hold man. Up, dog. They tracked us down. If KP didn't leave the tape, they would have never found us. But KP don't get no credit for that. Yeah, yeah, but you, get, <laughs> you get no credit, KP. You get credit you for losing it? the tape. Yeah. You get credit for losing the tape. That's what you get. Ben, <laughs> got to be more careful. Got to be more careful, KP. Thank you for that, KP. KP, lo- oh. nah, KP left the tape over some. He Pre- left trying to impress a girl. Not even trying to impress her. He, 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 he did impress a little bit because he probably would let them know, like, yeah, we just came from the studio. Yeah, playing, playing with, some shit. Playing, or, or, playing some stuff. Or, or really, KP is a promoter as well. Probably trying to check temp. What you think about this one? Yeah, I'm saying that we do too. Trying to check early 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 A&R didn't even know it. Don't even know it. Just really trying to see what everybody else was thinking. Trying to see what the vibe was. And um, just so happened, Antoine Patton said, "Where you get this type of quality music from? How to get this?" And um, and like I told you, Hetland and the Low. This this girl named Bianca. She worked for me. She worked for us at the store. She was she was a part timer. She come in after school. Just so happened, she go to Tri City. She coming in every day. Rico, please, Rico. I told you these two kids at the school, big, I mean, um, not big, Antoine and Andre, they, they asked me, could they come over here and they want to do it? I'm thinking, like, how they know me? They said, I don't know, Rico. I don't, I'm, I'm really like, oh, but yeah. but we do have people, we do have a deal, a guy to sign, but I'm still working, so it ain't yeah. just, it ain't, but or whatever, like, and she's like, man, are you going to let them come? And Bianca solid. Then she old a white girl. We never talked about that either. Oh, we talking about, <laughs> oh, uh, what's the name that got signed to, uh, to La Face? Uh, it's my pink, pink. Yes. No, no, no but this was this was that was that was. Oh, oh like, Bianca was different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 but 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 um, Bianca said, "Torn wants you." So I told her one day, I said, "Yeah, let him come up here and rap." And they came up there. They came up there with. And honestly, when I saw them, and I and I, and it's cool to say this stuff because I need to. I need to record it anyway because yeah, I'm right. we working to, on the, we working on, on the show. And okay. we in the nineties we wasn't we wasn't taking pictures and doing videos. We were, yes, we weren't doing we it. Wasn't a lot. doing so, that. So like it. so, Big and Dre they come up to the store. What was their name when they came as a group? Do you remember? Black Wolf and Black God Dog. God damn it! Say what? <laughs> Wolf and Black Dog. Black Wolf. Wolf. Come on again. Black Wolf and Black Dog or something. Wolf and Dog. <laughs> Wolf and Dog. Something like that. And, and and the group name was Two Shades Deep. Oh, that's uh, terrible. It's terrible. Okay, so but. But what I love, what I loved, because this is something I used to do, and I ain't never seen nobody do it. I used to wear my thermals in the wintertime. You, you wear your thermals, yeah. and you wear cut off shorts or something. You let your thermals be seen. Or you wear your thermals, let your thermals come out. Yeah. And I never really seen nobody else doing that. Because I thought that was just something that I was just ghetto at how I was just doing that. You're doing something different. These two little boys walk up with bald heads for one. Both of them got their heads shaved off. And this is during the time. Onyx. This is during the time of um, DOS effects. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's during that time. Yeah. So they come up, and they just looking grimy. Thermal's coming out the bottom, and they both dark skin. I'm dark. It just looking like my little brothers, and they just wow. looking like black little. Ugly. I'm just, it's just looking really, and they 15, and they just looking hard, and I'm just like, man, I can, I can mold. Like, this the youngsters, is, they yes, looking like yes. the youngsters, and, and they had bars. They had metaphoric bars where they just, I was, I, just, I was so impressed. I was like, I took them right home. I'm gonna take you home to meet my mom and my daddy type of thing. You were excited. I was excited. Because you didn't have nothing like that in the squad. In the squad. So you're like, I know what this is. I know what this is. And, and, and I knew that um they were younger than we were. Were you <laughs> thinking crisscross when you saw this? I was not thinking crisscross. Okay. Only because ABC, was- ABC and Crisscross, yes, to a certain degree, I was thinking youth, but young. ABC, but, but I knew ABC and Crisscross ain't really represent Atlanta. Even though I, I they was the cutest kids in the world. But I knew that they hadn't, y'all yeah, hadn't came out of middle school yet. Atlanta was high school. You got to go to high school to really represent Atlanta. Now, your young part is one thing, but the high school part is the, that's the nuance of Atlanta. That's, that was our social calendar. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. without without it being a record company here, without it being any nightclubs or ball, that's what social media is now for these kids. How, yeah. Like, these kids now, like my son Ryder, they got their whole thing now, like, to the point where you feel like you're spoiling them, but it's like they can they Uber, 
they like they, they get hotel parties. They do I'm, my daughter don't drive. She's oh, starting yeah. to drive now, but she's 20. I'm like, I, at 15, I was whipping. Yeah, I, I had, had a one too. There's no urgency for her to And now I want to say in Georgia, they, they pass a law. You can't get your license until you're like 18. That's crazy. That's crazy. crazy. That's not even fair. Yeah. I, 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 I had my learners at 15. You was gone. I was gone. I was gone too. Yeah. Wow. So, so like, um, whatever I was saying. What no, was you, you just knew that the source of who Atlanta oh, yeah. came out of high school. Yeah, the youth part. So like yeah. when I was so big and Dre, it was just I, they were just the perfect age. They was high school age. They were tenth graders. You know what I'm saying? They was tenth grade. That's when you fucking. That's when you drive. That's when you, and this is when you can decide what you want to get into. Yeah. You either gonna get into the, the, the go down the wrong path, or you get into you gonna touch easy money by stealing and selling drugs and want to continue it as an adult, or you're gonna because whatever you mistakes you make, you're gonna kind of get out of it too. Right. And during this time. So this is my question: Who came up with the name Outcast for Outcast? Um, I'm gonna give that credit to Big and Dre, but I approved. It was like it was, it was like I asked them. I said, "Hey, um, matter of fact, I ain't asked them. I told them. I said, well, the first thing that name ain't gonna work.' You thought Outcast was not gonna work? No, no, no. I said oh, the two shades deep. Yeah. First thing I said, I said that name not gonna work. And they looked at me and just like I am, I said, "No, that ain't gonna work." Because Dallas got a group called Shades of Lingo because it's a group out right mm-hmm. now called Four Shades Deep. I mean, I mean, four shades of brown. And I'm just hitting them with shit that they're like, oh, oh, okay. So, yeah, so we can't do that. Because I know we got L.A. Reid on the line. Now, mind you, when I met Big and Trey, like I told you, I, well, I didn't say that part. Parental advisory, we had to deal with, with Pebbles. Pebbles never knew that I'm the one who introduced Tian and Lisa. So when she met me, when she saw me come up into her office, and, and Tian and all them was the day, everybody said, oh, that's Rico. That's the person. And she put it together. She said, you know what? I got to introduce you to L.A. Reid. Did you like, get a check did she? Did she no, give no, you no, a no, finder? No, 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 no. She, it's well, just no. that she gave me her, her, um, her loyalty. She, Damn. she treated me as a. We gotta talk to Pebbles. She treat, yeah, yes, yes, yes. She treated me as an equal. Yeah, Pebbles is Oakland's finder. Like that's the done. That's like she is the one. She, she made L.A. Like L.A. Reed didn't even L.A. Reed, it was a favor to her for L.A. Reed to to rock to get to to talk to me because because she basically was saying, we owe this dude. He put TLC together. He the one. This PA stuff, I don't know nothing about it. Like with he that, is the glue. He is the glue. Wow. Let's, let's, let's do something with him. So LA said, man, bring me a group. And you brought him out, okay. Yeah, he's basically said, like, just bring me. I'm saying, y'all got a shot. You, so, so were you were you signed? Were they signed to you? Yes. God. And Goody Mob. Organized, no, they were all signed directly to us. Talk about it, man. Yeah, yep. But did you know what you were doing? They were si- you were signing groups to you. Like, yeah. well, well, at that time, that was a big thing on the East Coast, too, because y'all realized people were talking about owning their masters. And that's when the industry went to shits. We fucked around and got owned our masters and, and fucked everybody off. Can you explain that? Because I I hear the people saying that. What, what does that mean when you, when artists, I, like, executives back, say, I own my masters? Back in the 90s, when, when it was a, the deals you would have, you didn't actually own the masters. You own, you would get paid a royalty. Masters are, is the, the masters were like, music? the masters is actually the, um, the 100% copyright of the song. Like, meaning like the, um, when they're selling it. When they okay. said, like the, the recording, whoever pays for the recording, whoever the real tapes or whatever, like in the actual, say, say like they was paying eighteen percent on a hundred percent. The whoever the hundred percent that was the masters, but the masters is the one who who spends a million dollars on your video. So of course, w- once you say you want to own fifty percent of the masters, mm-hmm. then they take away fifty percent of the money that they were spending that they anyway. never told you about anyway. That they didn't. Remember, sometimes they. they just, They'll go out the record on radio. You'll be like, God damn, they just keep playing this fucking record until they make us like it. They'll make that money. That's because they own half the masters. But once we, me and Puffy, I ain't going to say me, Puffy was the catalyst of it because of the fact that he had so much success with Bad Boy. So it's like, man, I'm going to own, I'm owning half of this because he was a promoter as well. Puffy was a, yes. Puffy was a more of a, that's what people don't realize. His genius is not producing as much. It's running the whole conglomerate. That's why Revolt is working. Marketing. Puff, he's marketing, a marketing he's a genius. genius. Marketing he's a, genius. He's a, he's a School, he went to school, y'all. Puffy's no idiot. <laughs> Puffy, I'm saying Puffy is a great, intelligent black man, man. That 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 used lifestyle to sell brands. Sometimes, he, you know what I'm saying like yeah. being fly because he was the one that said, "I'm gonna have a hundred people standing outside of this club." Then I walk inside the club. This is me being with him back then. I walk inside the club. I say, Ain't "Nobody in here." I'm I'm emotional. Got feelings. Like you got the people standing outside, man. There's some people in the goddamn club, huh? Reek. Ain't nobody gonna know it's a club if everybody come inside. <laughs> How they gonna know it's a club if they don't see no line? Yeah, he was a genius. He was like, <laughs> he, was like he wants mayhem. Yes, he yes yes, and that's something else too. They had too before. Like he, he went through a lawsuit 
with um with people getting trampled with yeah, parties yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So he understood how to create a vibe right. or whatever. All right, yeah. let's let's talk about this. Outcast spelled with a K. Outcast, genius. First album called Southern Playlistic Cadillac Music. Long ass title, everything together. Was that ever problematic from a label or what, did y'all ever think that was? A, I mean, now it's different. It was the first. It was the first hashtag. It was the first hashtag. It had to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. think guy, about man. that. Philadelphia, this guy. All right. yeah. No, this, this is my partner. This, this guy. Yeah, so that was yeah, that was yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, for sure. This is <laughs> yin and yang, baby. So was that a? So you guys were like on to something before? Well, to be honest, like just like he said with Dr. Dre, I'm giving my shout out to George Clinton while he living. So, and I tell, I told George when I saw him, I said, George, you know, we was on boy. You, he said, boy, you brought. Y'all, you the phone, you the phone, like I'm the phone, because basically we was like looking at those album covers, man, sitting around there going through those records. You look at all them covers, you see, you see how people are being creative, and like Ohio players, those funky '70s albums is the reason why we wanted our t- first title to be right, something that could be. That's even that's the only one that we pretty much made sure was that way, because the second one, AT Aliens, there you go, was really about um, represent where we was from again. First mm-hmm. time it was about the South. Like two two dope was, boys in Cadillac. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was about the South and the Southern playlist of Cadillac music it was a, was a reach for the West Coast because we felt it was a reach for the West Coast. It was a reach for um, it was a reach for because the first place that really supported us, the first area that supported Players Ball, because we had to support Players Ball. See, Players Ball was a song that can I was, can I guess? What the first place? What was it like? San Francisco, Oakland. Yeah, yeah. I was at Gavin when I think I heard it break. Wow. K-Mail, whatever that, whatever that. K-Mail, Sway and Tech. Yeah. Swear to God. Like, I, I saw fir- I saw it when it, when it turned the corner. Yeah. yeah. That's the first place. And that that's what, so to a certain degree, that album, we we had to support that fan base as well. So that's why it was so funny that when Too Short moved to Atlanta, it was like, uh, damn. It was uh-huh. like, God damn, Too Short and us? It was almost like we was, because then, oh, Souls of Mischief. Of course. Um, Hieroglyphics. 93 to infinity. Come on, and, they was cracking. Yeah. That's kind of. I was a sound man for the far side. So I'm. Far in, side. Come on, I'm in there. So, so looking at. Our, this is who we were. Yeah. This is who we were. But we but we couldn't just look like them. But this is what our. We was our. our we hadn't really. We didn't know these people. We, but this is this was West Coast hip hop. Yeah. So now we're looking for trying to create Southern hip hop. And y'all now, did it. Because you basically see what hip hop is and you say, okay, like. These guys is raw. These guys is raw as these guys, and they both funky. And, but but they stick into the code, not copying original sound, not rapping over somebody. It's all the original. Don't you stick to the codes of what 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 each artist respect from each other? Almost like I don't want. I can't respect the artist that blows up over the same beat that I just put out. I just dropped this beat, and you just dropped another beat that sound like my beat, and you getting some burn. It's like fuck that. It's like your shit should be vetoed. You, you should be shut down because you're hmm. a copycat. Like. You, but even though everybody that, everybody had their regions, everybody had yeah. sounds like Scarface, Ghetto Boys, they had their sound. West Coast had their sound. New York definitely had their sound. Yeah. Like Rico just said something about people making stuff off of other 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 records that sound like your record, dude. It was this one beat that. All right, you get yours off. I got to get mine off. Yeah, it was okay. one beat that they produced. That I'm like, dog, if. If you would have got money off of everybody that that rapped over Watch for the Hook, I know. bro, fuzz, this beat, like, everybody in Philly rapped off of this Watch for the Hook beat. It was like, Why, what, what, just, that was it was just, it was, uh, it, was, uh, it, was the, it was like, it was it was the last of the greatest hip-hop beats. I'm talking about, I mean, I'm going to let you finish, but I got to double back on the story, because we, yeah. we performed at the tunnel. We, you know, when we did Watch for the, when Watch for the Hook was done, that's when New York, that's when they, that's when New York said, uh-huh. Y'all, New York. Well, or, or we we extend New, we we'll, we extend East Coast all the way down to Atlanta. The whole East Coast <laughs> now involved. Yeah, yes. Atlanta's not included in the East Coast. So we, embrace that. we embrace that. We, we embrace this is this is ours. This okay. is not. That's why we. That's why we don't say we say Southern hip hop. That's why we still these still the big bros. This is where it come from. We wanted to impress that watch for the hook. Man, that watch for you, the hook beat, man. It was by Cool Breeze. It was like I love Cool this, Breeze. Was, Shout out to Cool Breeze. The record was big, and you could tell Cool Breeze was really a street dude. Yeah. But like everybody would rap off of this beat, and it, it was, was like, yeah, it was like, 
you, you would hear so many mixtapes just floating around bah, bah, off of that. Bah, bah. I know, I remember. Did you feel? Did you feel bah, bah. like that record or that that instrumental was like you said? That was one of the ones that you know, like, oh y'all did stuff. With, okay, you did so many different things with Goody Mob, but that was the one record from a producer standpoint that people were like, "Yo, dog, we, man, we we need some of that." We bodied, we bodied, dude. When we did that, when we dropped that beat, man. And the, the best way to describe it is that when Funk Master Flex, because we still not feeling, a, you know. Feeling in love, love. Look, so Funk Master Flex called me. He like, yo, I need the mix to perform that. I need to perform. I said, so basically, Cool Breeze is signed to Interscope. Yeah. Everybody else signed to, like, wu Tang signed to different places. So I'm like, but Flex asked for us to perform that. So I'm getting everybody together. Yo, yo, we're going to New York to perform that. Andre, Big, everybody. On I'll Cool go. Breeze, too. On Cool Breeze set. <laughs> on Cool Breeze set, right? On, 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 on his budget. <laughs> on his budget. That's what I'm saying. Like, so, so, um. Cool Breeze got four or five songs to perform, and we worry because we know they only know watch for the hook, really. So we got I, got, I got people who still on parole. I got people, he got that song, he got Dirty South, but all of it's kind of, you know, cool and that kind of vibe. So they come on, Flex put me to the back. No, nah, like, come on, Flex put me to the back. Hey, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Basically, like, before you lose this crowd, do that record. Do that record. We do the record. God, it's like niggas in there skateboarding. It's like people hanging on the walls. I'm talking about this is the people, everybody, girls and the guys in the same bathroom. This shit is incredible. Everybody going crazy. We performed that same record four times in a row. Golly. You no, know, I flex drop a bomb on it. He, yeah. was, he was going back to back. He, he, he was DJing. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Andre come right back out. Never has ever. I mean, he come right back. Everybody kept doing it, man. That was a, that was a great moment for us. And Funk Master for the light. Because we, from Big Cap, it started with Big Cap. Shout out to Big Cap. It started right. with Big Cap with us, with Outkast, with Big and Dre. The first time I went to New York, Flex wouldn't even see us. Not, no, no disrespect, but he was busy. Cap had to see us. Nah, and nah. the Cap was his, at that time, Cap, Cap was, was, Cap was, Cap the, was one, the guy in the, in the clubs doing He was the one doing all the work. Yeah. Flex was the name. Yeah. Cap was doing all the work at that yeah. time. Yeah. I love, and Flex is raw, but at that time, the business was booming. So he couldn't be at every place at one time. Yeah. Cap was his main, main, main. That's his test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and Cap gave us, he gave us the flex love. He showed, you know, so he played, you know, listened to the stuff, gave us his opinion, said, yo, this is what you're going to have to do. You might need a, a, a remix. It's not so music. They're they going to like this. But, like, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, man, when's your birthday? And he, I think he said February 25th. I'm not sure, but my birthday, February 26th. And I trusted him because his birthday, because I knew. It was somewhat close. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was somewhat close enough to me to where I felt like he was giving me the real game and also protecting me from niggas going to hate. But don't worry, study down. I'm saying, because I want to say J. Rue, the damager. So that's just, how I used to work at Payday. Yeah, it just came out too as well. Yeah. So he had a record that was, you know, our record Come was. Come Clean was the record. Come Clean. It was the, New, so New York, is, but guess what that record did? Yeah, Premier. Guess what that record did to me? What's that? That's why I did sales therapy. Woo! Shut up! Wow. Because, oh, it makes sense! Because <laughs> I was the in, sound. I was in I was in New York when that shit was, and I'm wanting niggas to love players ball. Yeah. But they love and Come Clean. Do, do, do. Do, mm. do. I said, man, ugh. you did cell therapy because uh, because that was so raw. I was like, man, I got to, we got to, we got to get deep. We got to get deep into this New York. You know what? Hey, we got to start doing a FAQ playlist. We, we'll talk about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. we're gonna do that. Don't worry okay, about it. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, let's, we're talking about AT Aliens, right? right? Now, me as a sound guy, Q knows. I listen to production first and how things are mixed. My favorite record off that album, not Elevators. We played the hell out of it on the radio. Jazzy Bill. To this day, if I had to test a sound system out, the way that record starts off, uh, what the hell were y'all thinking when y'all did that record? That's my favorite. That's one. You no, know off that album. That's 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 Big Brother Amir. That's one of Ray's jewels. And I want to say with that particular record, it's funny. Drum machines. The MPC had came out with a new. Might have been the MPC too, and it had this new effect thing. To where you was, now you was running st- like so. It's, it's 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 moving. It's modulated. A yeah. Little bit. So like that album was based on that, and it was on the facts that we was um we didn't want to put no more like because we went so heavy on the singing hooks on the first album. Yeah. We and and Big and Dre was now performing these songs, feeling like you gotta have we we gonna have to bring out some niggas to sing, or we gonna have to start doing all these hooks. Mm-hmm. So that's when I felt like they took a more proactive vibe into making sure they came up with the hooks, and I think that um Jazzy Bell was um. I love I, I love the drums on Jazzy Bell. I remember when we Aren't did you? it because doing that album, even with Jazzy Bell, that, that, I mean, even with that album in particular, I remember, I remember I rented this um, the Biltmore, like like the, like this nice condominium downtown. Right, right. Like, oh, like I'm gonna go somewhere and just 
meditate for like a month. I'm going to work on this album. I remember I couldn't spend them but two nights in that place. And I felt like a fool because I done paid all this money to get this place and I was never comfortable. I, could, I went comfortable there for one. I couldn't even spend night never like one night. I'd rather be so much more comfortable at the dungeon, at the house on the floor. Yeah. But I was like, man, we need, to, we need to get fancy for this album. So that's why I need to feel fancy. For so, eight hey, aliens. <laughs> what, what, what records came out of that people that may not be deep, deep in, but what hit records came out of the dungeon off the top of your head? Um, well, out of that, the actual dungeon, you know, that was like a dirty basement. So it's almost like it was pre-production. Most of that production had to go on to another studio. But it was like that's when we spent the time digging in the crates. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's when it, it's like – Cell therapy was in the dungeon for a fact. Like cell wow. therapy, cell therapy, like the dirty south, like that, during that era. Like, like I, cause I remember, because we had two studios then. I remember that um, Curtis Mayfield, Curtis Mayfield had a studio that he wasn't using, and they was about to sell it in Atlanta. In Atlanta, and it was okay. Curtis Mayfield's old house. And just the thought of Curtis Mayfield getting rid of his spot made us say, "No, like, huh? We'll just we'll save it, huh? He got the money to pay for it." We'll just rent it out instead of like trying to buy it. It was just we always did the right thing, and that's why I think our name was always loved and respected because it was loved and respected for more than just music. It's like we we kept we kept the dreams alive in the history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We kept trying to inflate people. We kept trying to get people inspired and motivated. Even if we couldn't touch it personally, we were showing that our reach was long. We were showing See, that y'all was working out of that studio, out of Curtain. So we we had, we had his house, and um and um and L.A. Reed. We had his house, so now the guys at the house, they can record now. It's, the original dungeon, they couldn't really record because they just, you know, they just get the beats together and they write. So now they can record because we got the spot there. But some about the time that you need to, to just write is better than just being able to go write in the booth. So while they was over there recording songs that we didn't even use for the Goody Mob album, but because L.A. Reed calls, say, hey, I need to hear some of this Goody Mob stuff because the the people starting to want it. So I go by the studio. I say, hey, man, what y'all got recorded? Give me, give me a little CD or whatever. I go and I play it for L.A. And he here and he like, he said, what the fuck is this? I said, he, I said, huh? He said, it's, it's no time. It's like songs are just long verses. You ain't, you ain't put this together. Like, I said, like, he was right. You know what I'm saying? He was like, you haven't went through and did what I done taught you about, like, b- um, 16 bars, 12 bars. Song structure. Like, your song structure. Yeah. But, like, why are these songs, why some of this shit is long? With, like, I said, yeah, I haven't been listening to it. I've been over at the house with my mom because – Basically, like, because the house been empty. I've been in the house with my mom because we ain't had the house to ourselves in so many years. Now, they, I got everybody over here. I'm over here. But ironically, me and Red just came back from New York and bought records. And the records was over at my mama's house. So as soon as I left that meeting, I just went straight home and took that time to go do what we do, just digging in the records. Mm-hmm. Man, I, that's when I caught cell therapy. That's when I caught dirty sound. That's when I caught thought process. That's when I caught all these different drum breaks. From some collection that we done got in Harlem, we done bought and then forgot to pull this box out. This is one of them collections where it's like, if it's 50 records, 30 of them are straight breaks. And I don't mean break beats, I mean old songs that nobody never heard with a, with a, with a sugar spot that, like for real, with a spot in it. So it's like, so I got so many different things to choose from. Right. But I'm, but, and they already working on the album, so I'm just like, I'm looking for stuff that's better than everything I done heard we do. That we done did, so and I'm grabbing that shit and I'm on it because I'm embarrassed. Cause L.A. Reid done just snapped my head off and I and I ain't told the homies yet because they're gonna be like, man, fuck him. It's like the energy's not not gonna go to no how I'm acting all pussy. It's gonna go to some, like some it's, 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 revolt. It's, they gonna go back at him like yeah. man. They gonna be the, so I'm like, let me go back in charge. Let me go in. Let me go in mad. Say, oh man. But I also went in knowing that um structure. You learn something from that conversation. When, when you're dealing with rawness, when you're dealing with great creative people, you mm-hmm. can't tell. Like CeeLo verse on Get Up, Get Out, that one's that wasn't a typical l- verse. That verse was longer than everybody. We had to cut the song in half. That's why the video was messed up when they put out the video with, with just CeeLo and Gilp, or they put out one with just Big and Dre. Even though it was an outcast song, that record label never did a video. For the whole thing. Because it was like a seven-minute song. Yeah. But who, because it was really just supposed to be, that's just C, like if you listen to CeeLo's, the same, it's like, it's really, his verse is too long. But who, what if I would cut his verse in half? So he was just snapping, doing was, his thing. He was doing his thing. And, and, let and, him flow. and we had to get with him. We had to get with him because that was the hit, right? His verse is the hit. No matter, it's, it might be an outcast song, but as far as creativity goes, CeeLo's verse is the song. If you would have took any of that away, it wouldn't have been as special or whatever. So right. in that particular moment, we said, fuck it. This ain't going to be a, a single. 
This is going to be an album cut. But yeah. well, guess what happened? The Source Magazine picks it. It's the rap of the month. That's the it. Bit. Yeah, so now everybody says it's got to come out. But we really couldn't put the song out correctly. So, so like. You had to do an edit. You had to do an edit or whatever. So stuff like that is um, doing, like, at the dungeons. Like, so, like, we recorded that at studio, but the verses and stuff we heard at the dungeon. But a lot of that stuff from the, um, from the Goody Mob album, we, we, did record, we, did, we did the music in the dungeon. Wow. We did the music or whatever. Like, have you, you know, I, I, I think, I don't know, it was a documentary. I saw something on you guys, and it was like that you guys didn't take, Organized Noise didn't take any publishing from Outkast, right? So you didn't you didn't take any publishing from Outkast, and then you put two-thirds of TLC together, right? And there's certain things that you've done on a retrospect. Do you feel like, damn, I should have, or damn, I'm like, man. I, still be, I could be eating hey, off of this. Because, hey, I can most definitely think, like, man, I post, I'm supposed to be owning part of Future. I'm supposed to own part of goddamn um, mm-hmm. Outkast. I'm supposed to own part of TLC. But, nah, I don't because – we got paid for what we did for, for for whatever we did for them, and I can't get any one of them on the phone right now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I haven't asked them for nothing major, but I'm pretty sure if I did, I could get it. You got know it. And so, and and that, that that's not the reason why you keep a, a a relationship cool, but that's how you feel good about yourself as a human like, being. As a human being, I feel good about myself when I get up and look myself in the eye. But now, on a day when I'm like, I want a new car. You know what I'm saying? Then I could feel that way, but then I have to think like we had like four Range Rovers, two points. Like, you was balling it, out. It, of yeah, control. It, 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 so you can't really be regretting or mad about nothing, but except the, but except going forward, I can I can now accept taking taking a piece of something that I didn't that I'm not doing all the work in. But that's the hardest part about me going forward now is that so many stuff now that people just want us to be a part of. But if I don't make the beat, that's why I'm not around Future all the time because it's like I'm not making the music. You my little cousin. I'm proud of you. I don't have to be around you to feel successful. I'm successful. Yeah, you know what I'm talk, saying. But talk about that future. Yeah, the future yeah. connection because I've, I've I've seen it. He, he's, that's he's my man. That's my blood. That's my blood cousin. He never been in the studio. He never did none of this shit until he me. I put him in the studio for the first time. I got him going. And right when I was going through, um, I was and I tell him I, I advise him. It's just that um once he once he and I'm even even when he got to deal with um with Epic, they had to call me. Because cause they didn't trust Rocco, because Rocco had already had success, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they couldn't figure out how to talk to him. You know what I'm saying? They was like, he's already got a million dollars from us. We scared to give him another million. Then he just, you know what I'm saying? So, so they called it a neutral party, but it was, but it was Rocco's and um and Future's deal. I mean, Orlando called me, and we I just went in as a like, okay, this is a, this is somebody we know or whatever. Like, and I and I pretty much made it happen or whatever. But at the same time, it's like you don't want the experience. It's like the power comes from um. What you do, not just what you know what I'm saying, and I don't. I didn't feel that that I didn't feel as powerful in his situation because Mike Will or, or Metro Boomin doing the beats, they should feel powerful. You know what I'm saying like because the music, that's the power to me. I never thought the other people talking and all that stuff. Only thing I'm powerful at when it comes to him now is like I'm his elder to where I can advise him on what's right from wrong. He gonna listen to me from a family point of view. Like, like a whatever. trusted source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is when you use this, the word seniority. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when that comes in. Yeah, or whatever. Like yeah. speaking of that, my cousin's birthday coming up, so he got a big, elaborate blowout. I bet up. he is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see it though? Did you hear it? Like um, when I met him, like when no, I mean like some of the early songs, like like Magic and uh, just you know. Oh man, let me tell you something. Like my, I, I saw it before then. I got him a record deal. I got him signed to DreamWorks. He was signing DreamWorks before he signed over to Western Nine. But if I need to look through my old paperwork, he still might be signing me. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, you know what I'm saying? For real, I had a group called The Connect, but I never put it out. But I had got Michael Austin called me and was like, yo, Reed, right when we put out the, um, Sleepy Brown, I can't wait, can't yeah. wait. Yeah. Outcast on it. It was a two act deal. We got Sleepy a deal, and I had a deal. Great record. But, uh, the Connect. Great record. And I just never put, it, put the stuff out, but I took the budget and we spent the money. And he got his chains, his first two DF chains. That's when he realized that. The music business pays consistently, you know what I'm saying? And they don't forget, like, he, he got a – Future wrote, um, you know, um, Ludacris, Blueberry Yum Yum. That song, Get Your, get your Lighters, you Grab That Sticky, Let's Get Higher. What I did for Ludacris, which is a cult anthem now, I mean, a, a cult um, um, anthem. Future wrote that hook. Damn. And Ludacris didn't even know it. I mean, he knew it. He knew him as Meathead. 
I mean, when I was, Meat head. I remember mean, I was in the studio one day and Ludacris popped by to see Future. And I was like, I said, I'm looking up thinking like, he don't even know. I said, Ludacris, you don't even know that Future wrote that, that hook on Blueberry Young. You know? He said, he did. He was like, he said, Future. I said, he said, I thought Meathead. I said, I said, I said, Meathead is Future. Wow. <laughs> but so, so it's almost like the little kid, Future really flipped his shit, man. He really turned that. He really re you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and he, because the dungeon is about hip hop rap. I told him, my shit ain't dope, boy. I don't know for you. This era of music is ending. Mm-hmm. They don't want to hear nobody rap no more. You going? I said, but you Kurtwood's finest. You are nothing but. He's nothing but dope boy slang. Just what happened? Jeezy had pretty much used every dope boy thing you could say. Yeah. So I didn't think that was gonna be the lane for Cuzzo. I'm like, Z- it's already used up. Jeezy's already used that up. We, we got to find another angle. But I feel like when he um. When he put that auto tune on his voice, when he started using melody, once he went into my bag, once he went into my bag, whenever he do too sexy for my, whenever I hear him doing all that kind of cool fly, you in my bag, you, mm. and which is a DNA bag, which is your daddy bag, which is my daddy bag. We come from a line of player niggas, like you know what I'm saying. Our parents and stuff. These niggas are, are, are womanizers, excuse me, <laughs> players, players, but not. <laughs> he and Rico keeping it they real. Got nine, ten kids a piece. Everybody got kids. I'm looking at him. I'm like, man. Don't be so much like your family. We got I just want to. We got to go down the album. There's so many albums you got. So, so many. So much he's touched. Equimini. Equimini. Amazing. Talk about it. Equimini. First of all, that's big and Dre coming out party. Cause you know what, Southern Player List and AT Aliens. I had my hands into naming those albums based on what I felt like we needed as a company, as a team. Mm-hmm. Equimini. That was the most. That's they coming out party. Big and Dre, Aquarius and a Gemini. They came up with the name. Artwork, and the artwork, yeah, and and I bet you can't do it a third time. That's like for like when yes, they did that, yes, it was yes. like dog, yeah. and, and it really was the icing on the top. They murdered it. They really did. Like like conceptual, con- right? Con- I mean, and then for me, music wise, um, screwed on the Barbie. So we uh, was saying, yeah, 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 yeah. So 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 to me, screwed on the Barbie was um, was Raekwon on that. Um, Ray Kwan, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ray, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 screwed, but, but screwed on the Barbie, though, it was, um, it was, um, we got, it was our five mics. We got the five mics on Equipment You know what I'm saying? Like, and, 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 and we felt like we played the game correctly. The third album. You're yeah, right. yeah, yeah. As far as, first album, we, we had them hooks on it. Second album, we made sure to show that Big and Trey was rapping more and, um, and the hooks that they were doing. The third album, we incorporated New York MC. Raekwon got us that other mic. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Raekwon got that hate off us. Because when Raekwon got on um got on that um skewed on the Barbie or whatever. And y'all did the video at, at um at the Apollo. Yeah, it looked like that. It's funny. It looked okay. like the Apollo. But that wasn't at the Apollo? No, it's crazy you said that though. That's crazy you say that. That's that's amazing. It was at the Apollo. Yes. It was at the Apollo. <laughs> I thought it was, it was, it was at the years. Apollo. And that's just dope. You had Raekwon, we brought it to the Apollo in Harlem. But actually it was at it was Brian Barber, first video. Brian Barber. Brian Barber shot his first video. It was their idea, and, and it was Big and Dre direct. It was their concept. And um, and to me, it was, I won't say, it was at the Tabernacle. It was at the Tabernacle downtown. In, in, in Atlanta. But, but but the fact that um, the way that happened, man, the way Raekwon, the way we make that happen, man, the way Power, shout out to Power, Wu-Tang, they had the wu store down here, and they came and said, man, we just feel like we supposed to be rocking with y'all or something. Mm. We got the store down here, and, and in my mind, I felt like these niggas some giants, man. Wu Tang can't open store right downtown on P Street. We can't do shit about it, yeah. but I also loved it because it meant that it's important to Atlanta. I mean, uh, Atlanta's important to them. So yeah, Rosa so Parks was the big record off that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we played the hell out of that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rosa Parks was the one that um, Rosa Parks touched that first, like like that record, and then they then Rosa Parks tried to sue us for that record. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Just by using the name and thinking, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and thinking that maybe that it was being used in vain and maybe for something negative. That's probably one of her people's. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah she probably had, the, like she, the state or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was way too old probably to be worried about that. But um, but the fact that screwed on the Barbie and we had um, what's the other one? Was that Liberation? Something? But no, that's about, what was on that album. Uh, you had uh, yeah, Rosa Parks. Uh, the, the, the art of storytelling, which is fine. Ooh, that's oh great. Goodness. Slick Rick. See what I'm saying? Slick Rick Let's get Slick, Slick Rick. See what I'm saying? Our, yeah. but to me, we feel like the, the. Y'all was. We, at that point, we were comfortable enough, no chips on the shoulder, to, to let people know who, who we were fans of. Nah, I, I got that. I got that. Who we were fans of. Then, then, and then by the time we get to um, 
Stank on you, which is now you naming planets now. Like that's you, the fourth you, album, y'all. You naming planets. You naming planets now. Now you saying, you know what? Because I'm asking Dre. I'm like, because even on Equipment, I that's when he came out with the um the ski boots, the white blonde hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I talked to him backstage. And I'm like, hey. So I, I ain't questioning what you're doing, but what you what you doing? Why? I mean, just I mean, what's going on? And he like, wasn't dating Eric Badu. That was like, he think he was already dating her. Yeah, you know what he said to me? Like I tell everybody every time, I want to look like the music. Mm-hmm. Woo! That's deep. Damn, that's some rock star. That's deep. I walked out that dress room. Y'all heard him? He said he want to look like the music. So nobody said that. So you know he was uh, it was changing. He was evol- evolving, every, not changing, this evolving. Is what I'm saying the, the, the heat. The heat was coming from the people on the inside of the team. I'm walking up to I'm walking up to the to the building where everybody everybody seen Dre, seen Dre. Seen Dre. I mean, one will talk to Dre, man. Dre, I you seen Dre. This is your own family. Seen Dre. I got an inside story to go, tell you. I had to go in that. the back room. What's up, Dre? Yeah. He just saying like same thing. Like, if you look, got something to say. He talking about like, I just want to look like the music. So the I album mean, covers. Get off my back. Yeah. This album cover <laughs> is, is classic because it's. I want to look like the music. Because that, got, I mean, y'all had so many. I'm sorry. For, but even before that, they had so many, like, musically, it was so different. Y'all were going to. It was one song, and then it have a cut, and then it would break, break, break. Yeah, yeah. Where, where did that come from? Ready, break. break. What? Where the hell? That that, that kind of stuff is the, is the team, man. I want to say Big Boy, man. Big, big like General Pat. Big Boy, I need to Ge- call Big Boy. General Pat, man. General, like he he li- he still lives for it. you. Can't man. He's spending eight uh, hours in the studio that's a day. Him. He, he Andre three thousand is trying to stay as far as he can away from it because he don't want to love it. Like that, like, 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 he, he loves it as well, but the same, it, but we also need it. We need it. We need it because it's therapeutic. So like, but, but big boy, it's like, man, he's general Patton. Like I'm saying he will not, he, 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 he will not retire. He, 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 he won't, will not, he will not retire because, because it's, it's therapeutic, man. It's almost like, with, like, like, like with Andre is like, Andre ain't quick. Andre, every time you talk to him, you ain't talked to him in a while, but now he done stopped power 15 new raps. I'm saying he's just popping up with raps, and he got he got verses that man he'll pop up man he'll sell verses and he ain't pick up no paper. Why do you think we don't have <laughs> an Andre wow. three? Why do you think we don't have an Andre three thousand solo project? Oh, actually, he has. We we, we have an Andre three thousand solo project. It's just the things that comes with it. It's the thing. It's the business the things, side or it's the, thing, it's the things that come with it. It's, it's the part of like. I don't want to promote it. I don't want to be in no videos. I don't want. Yeah. I don't want to do that. So nobody. So the other people like. Then why we want to put it out? So I, you understand? I ain't ask you to put it out. So it becomes like <laughs> he loves the music. He, lo- he, he doesn't gonna, love he the business. Music. Yeah, he he don't love the business. He loves making music. So one day he's gonna say, "Huh, man, huh, Rico, take all this stuff, man. Go do what you want to do with it." Well, God damn it! I'm, I'm just waiting, I'm I'm waiting wait. for that phone I'm call. Just, I'm right. waiting on that phone. So let's call. talk. All right, since we're on stank on you, we gotta talk about. Uh, uh, I mean, this this song just quick. So fresh and so clean. Fire, Miss Jackson, out of here. Oh, uh, uh, Is bombs over Baghdad. Bombs yes. over Baghdad. Yeah, bombs over Baghdad. Bob. Bob jumped that album off and was cold about that. It was that L.A. Reid called me? He was like, "Yo," because at this time I'm a little bit further now. He already took the boys away from me. Like I said, a, a little <laughs> bit now from this point to where that, that they don't have to call and ask me for stuff. But the guys still coming to me because they know like we want to know what's up. What you think? Yeah. So, so they done came to me already. L.A. Reid come to me like, "Hey, man." Got to put this Miss Jackson out, man. This is gonna be a Grammy record. This is out of here. This is the big record. I said, I said, so, I, so he saw it. He saw Miss Jackson this Grammy record, but 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 um, but but Andre was adamant about Bombs Over Bad that being the single. Jeez. And I was adamant about So Fresh So Clean just being a part of the mix because it was the glue that connected the past to now. Yeah, of course. So, so it's everybody, the sound of everybody, it, everybody got their thing in. So I go to L.A. Which is something very easy. There's no way you shouldn't have made the figures out on your own. I said, if Miss Jackson is as big as you say it is, just put our bombs over bad there first and get to that. Mm, you right. you set waterfalls up, didn't you? You gotta yeah. set it up. Yeah, yeah. He said, but they wanna be, so Andre direct the video, them running through. That's one of the best videos of Outcast all time. The, the drop top pulling on, they pulling the back. It was the action, it was an action video. Yeah. It was great. Colors and, were different. And it set the vibe for them doing right. Miss Jackson where he shot with Gary Gray. Big, I was big, saying, big videos. A big video with just a house rained on and leaked. Like, come on, you, you trying to put these niggas on PBS. Like, like, <laughs> like you trying to soften them. You made them as soft as you could on this one right here. But but, yeah. but, but it works. It worked. Yeah. Because he came out looking like a madman. Because at the end of the day, Bums Over Bad Dad was our Beastie Boys. Okay, this, mm. let's talk about that sonically. Bums Over Bad Dad, the... 
the drums, the way it was. SB12. You did that was an SB12? SB12. That's what SB12, the way them drum sounds go. Cat, cat, brr, brr. That's the SB12. So you brought it back after people stopped using it. Andre used it. He did that. So, so it's almost like What? Like, yes, Andre Andre 3000 like he the soldier boy Drake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my tra- What? So he he that was him in his bag. On the SB12, really trying to do that's what I'm saying. That's the study. That's oh, the, that's, that's that study. Like like when you like I see my big brothers them they're going to the bag for this like on, like on waterfall. We used to SB12. That boom, cat, the boom, cat, brr, boom. yeah, yeah, yeah. SB twelve was a certain wow. loop, and that's the drum machine that Marley Mar them was losing. Yeah, yeah, they were using, was using and it. that's the one that I told you that ended a whole era of producers and started a new one when the MPC came out because the MPC was easier, but the SB twelve still had certain qualities that if you was a, a freak and you just love this, you say, no, I'm gonna take my time and do that bit but by bit. That song is fast as hell. What's the BPM on that roughly? I don't know exactly, but it's fast though. It it, it, it had the cape on. Was it, it's but, had, but the reason I say that because every time I saw Outkast perform that live, I used to love the way Andre would do his shoulders yeah. and, and you yeah. do that right. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? Like, <laughs> it's just a vibe. Yeah, yeah. It's like then they had the whole Coke, music, electric revival. It was just a lot going on. Like you just on. said, when you doing that, they doing the show. Yeah. Like, that, what? They, 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 they was also like. They letting go on this one. Cracking, bro. They letting yeah. go on this one. They loving themselves on this one. Nothing and else sounded like that on the radio at else. all. And that's what I felt like. But that's the part of hip-hop that Antonio Reed didn't understand. Sometimes when you're leading, you don't have to do what's, what they want you to do. You can lead. Yeah. Say, so Miss Jackson, to me, yes, that, that's a singing. That's, that's the vocals. That's the music. But that beat is a straight straight ahead. But it, it's not going to crack. It's not going to make too many people go crazy. Like, But, but the, the, the way he freaked that... What they're talking about for real. The fact that both of them are having Erica Badu, this Erica Badu that y'all keep talking about or whatever that he's you know, he's he, he in a, 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 um, a spell by. It's the same. Sorry, Miss Jackson. You, you, she, she still got a he still got a baby by her. And 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 both of them had that in common, Big and Drake. But they both had they both had unsupported failure. Oh yeah, we got oh. The, we got the, the logo. <laughs> go, go ahead. Yeah, but um so they both so that song was was culturally honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you haven't, you know what I'm saying? Like, even though that Big and Dre. How different they were. How, how different, different they, they were. were. They both was experiencing same. baby mama uh, drama, even though it wasn't baby mama drama, because of course it wasn't, because, but yeah. whatever we consider that drama to be at that time, because even, even both my kids now. It's stressful. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is, it, it could be like, whatever they think is a problem is, whatever they problems come first, whatever, you know what I'm saying? That's why I consider drama, because, it's something that you got to deal with. You know what I'm mm. saying? This is your child. So it's mm. like, and the only way you're not going to have it is that you got to put that child in the home or with you or whatever. Like, even if you got that, you still might have to deal with some kind of. Uh, Man. That's deep. All right. So now, okay, we, we off that. Next album is the Speaker Box Love Below. You're not a part of. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Oh, man. Horrible. But, but, but not like that, but just more like. Did you know something was coming up? Well, they had they, they we had conversations, man. It was conversations that was like um, the end was coming. The end meaning the end was of, near of like outcast or outcast. Got like it. Them saying that. And we, so that do you feel like organized noise part of that of that is coming to an end with? The, I mean, no, no. It was like because of the Interscope deal, I was already comfortable with that because we've already went to Interscope and got more money than everybody, and we didn't necessarily succeed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like. Right. I can't be mad at somebody else for going and trying to get their bag. Got it. Yeah, but like, like it's time to it's bag time or whatever. Everybody get there. Yeah, absolutely. So, so when um, but but their reasoning behind it was um, was pretty selfish in the sense of um, we don't want y'all to be a part of it because this might be our last album. You know what I mean? Like this mm-hmm. might be our this might be our last project. So we, we want to get all of we're it. We're gonna get all of it. Mm-hmm. We're gonna keep all this money. We want nobody to be a part of it. And that part, you like if this is the last project, we definitely need to you, be a part of it. That, that, that should have never been said. I, I always should have been said was, we not gonna accept anything that's not better. You know what I'm saying like, like, like to me, hey y'all, to me that album, we, we couldn't have fit in that album anyway. Like, like that you was, already knew that. No, 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 I knew that. Dre, you wrote most of these songs from guitar, so you, you so it's almost like. We could have, we would have not been a part of it just because you had already wrote it. 
You already God doing it. You, you already did. You not to tell me. Ah. Uh, you didn't you say so. Almost like your honesty was too, a little too over the top. It's almost it's like, like it, coming to your parents cute. like I'm leaving because yeah, I got money and I don't need you no more. It's like yeah. why would you say that? Just yeah. say you leaving because you're yeah, 18. Yeah, you can leave. Yeah, we yeah, all got money. We go. Get, but Q, did you as a this is me on the outside. We're both in radio at the, in this time, right? Yeah. We heard that they were doing two separate albums, but we it's still an Outcast project. Did you think that was a good idea, or for, did it make a good? Because you're inside, yes. And I, 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 I don't mean to speak on Outcast business, but I'm like, I just have an insight. Did I ever tell you about my Outcast story about this album? No. When I, Jimmy Kill? No. I got to tell you. I, yeah. I'm, I'm explaining well, to you what I what I saw, but I want you to explain what what did you see? Like, damn, they doing two separate projects. Yeah, and, and it really was that. That's what it was. It was really like. No outcasts. Yeah, it's really like no outcasts at that point. It was like no outcasts and like and like and luckily, and I give Antonio Reed credit for this. I don't know what he did, but he found a way to package them together and call it outcast. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because it was two, it was two separate projects. They put them together, but God bless. The, the, you know what I'm saying, the way you move, Huge. Sleepy did write that hook. Wow. So we were a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we, we, we so Sleepy wrote that hook. And, hey, y'all, no matter how, because hey, y'all became so big, Andre 3000. Out of here. Andre 3000 could have easily not spoken to none of us ever again. Maybe CeeLo, once, once he did Nars Barkley, they could have been hanging <laughs> they, they, they <laughs> out. You know they could have been hanging out. And I, we could have showed up at the at the award show, maybe because of the, because of um, In Vogue. and Because this is the world we was in. Waterfalls and the In Vogue, Don't Let Go, you gone. We we oh, had everybody. We, we, we was in that world in ninety six, ninety seven. So y'all ain't outcast. Hey y'all, outcast ain't when the biggest waterfalls. Goody Mob was nowhere near as big as what you know I'm saying. Love we had Mob. waterfalls in ninety five, ninety six. That was ten million type success. So our name was in a place that you guys people didn't know about our rap groups. Y'all was just our rap groups then. Yeah. So so when they get there, when they got to that party with the way you move and hey y'all, I'm just I'm sorry when it, when Dre got there with hey y'all. I was just so happy that the way you move was just as big. Yeah. It was a totally different record, but it became, during that time, Hey Y'all and the Way You Move went back and forth at number one. It did. For 40 weeks type of shit. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, because if that didn't happen, I believe Andre would be so much further yes. distance from, not because he wants to be, but because it would have felt like, it's all me. It's like, God, they, yeah. all, they just want to see me all the time. They don't, I'm saying, they just, I, I'm the cherry on top of this thing now. But at the end of the day. It's still a clever album. It's, it's, it's genius. At the end of the day, the way you move, it's like big boy stayed on your ass. Like no matter how, you in, in Hansburger, Germany. Yeah. <laughs> she come on. But, but then, the way, then the way you move, come on. It's like it kept it kept my brothers, it kept my little brothers right. remaining twins. All right, let yeah. me tell you this. I'm gonna t I have two stories. Damn, I don't know if I should tell the second one. I talked to Blue Williams, who was the manager of Outcast. Outcast. And he said something to me, and I felt sorry for him. And I felt like, damn, he was like, they're not going to tour on this album. I said, what? He said, we missed out on millions. He said, I missed out on millions of dollars. since they Because they never, they never toured. Well, well, Big Boy went out. I'm no, 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 no. Outcast. They did not tour for that project. Together. Until the 20-year anniversary. Then they came back and redid everything. I'm talking about when this when this shit was hot. When, when that came out, but then Big Boy go. No, no. What happened was that they did so much televised stuff. Got it. They, right. That, that burnt Dre out. They, he was performing Hey Ya. He was goddamn doing the Hey Ya dance on TV so many times. Where he felt like a goddamn right, right, right. I feel you. A yeah. character of a and Idle Wild don't. Were, were you in part of Idle? Uh, yeah, Idlewild yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, I did Idle Wild. Well, well, actually, Idle Wild was something that um that um. Barry Weiss, Barry Weiss, Weiss, Barry Weiss. Barry Weiss. Pimp C had just passed too. I was in his office. Mm -hmm. Because we had Barry, because that's when, they, okay, he was like, Barry called me and said, hey, I don't want to be the guy that took outcasts from 10 million to 2 million. Could you come over and help me, please? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it still happened. But, yeah. he, said, <laughs> but he said, I, I didn't want to be that guy. Don't so, movie, though. So, so, I, I, no, I, don't movie. So he called me. And he was like, man, the guys will not give me a, um, a rap song for this Idle Wild movie. And I did Mighty O. Mm. When we did Mighty O, I went and did Mighty O for him. I right. Dre. I, mean, I, I was on the train coming from New York. I was on the train coming from Connecticut. So, Barry Weiss, I'm thinking like, man, I called Dre. He picked up. 
I said, hey, <laughs> they want um, they want me to get going. He said, whatever you get, Rico. Just I said, I, I felt they the, got the respect. I felt the the, the like love. yes, Rico. Whatever it is, just come on. Get, I get home, and he said, mighty, 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 mighty. And we had magic. We had magic. That was that was a great song. I, I think the mix got away on that one. That's why the song didn't go as big as it's supposed to go. Because sonically, the wrong, we got com- the mixing right. kind of confusing because we it was over here at this record company. That's what something that we always had in line. We had that pecking order in line when it came down to records. No record could get through our goddamn regime because if it slipped us, if it slipped big, if it slipped Dre, if it slipped, we, we, we weren't gonna slip Antonio. And if it uh. did, he was gonna spend the money to bring it back. If it got this far, <laughs> he'd be like, "That's where his." His greatness, he, he he don't know his greatness is that when, when we know we got a record, we'll, we'll go to the fucking end of the earth to make sure it's a hit record. And overspend, overprotect, overdo whatever, because at the end of the day, that's going to bring um, revenue beyond right now. It's going to get us back even, but it's also going to right. add, because wow. that, that's what his Rico, life was about. He's standing on hits. Rico, what do you think is the future of organized noise, or what's next for organized noise? Well, for a fact, film and television. Damn right, yeah. rooting too, huh? Can you, can you, you, can you oh, you can't yeah, tell fi- us. No, film and television, and because we, we, we working on an animated, we got, it's two, two different things we're working on, or whatever, but one of them I can't really talk about because other people want, talk it, about it. The other people want to buy it. Forget uh, uh, your managers and your people in the back. What the fuck talk is up. an NDA? They walked yeah. away anyway. Yeah, they That's left. A, no, but, but I'm saying, but I am going to talk about one of them. <laughs> I, I am going to talk about one. I'm going to talk about the one with Erica Alexander. Oh, I love Erica. Yeah, from it, Philly. From, Ah, from, from Philly. That's why I, that's why I said it. That's why I yeah. said it because he was gonna perk up. <laughs> Erica Alexander. She ain't from Germantown though. And, and, uh, but she, um, went, and, she went to the same high school. I'm talking and ben shit. Left and, um, and, um, Color Farm. Color Farm has come to us, and um, we're working on something. And also with um, Carl. What's his name? Jerry. No, 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 the guy, who, the, the, the showrunner, the showrunner for Boondocks, and um, okay. Yeah, so you're working on some animation? Because, listen, we're working on one with them. QDZ and I, we, we love watching, uh, uh, shout out to Wu-Tang, shout out to RZA. Yeah. We love that this, this, this love past it. two seasons, right? Y'all got a story to tell, Y'all man. Y'all have so much. We got content. Dr. Love, Stephen Love. So 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 it, it, it's, in mo- it's, it's, in mo- it's in it's in motion. It's most definitely in motion. But as far as organized noise goes, we feel like um, film and television has been something. It. It's, it's, it's been something that, you know, from not just set it off to Snakes on the Plane to... Um, to Muhammad Ali, to um, Miami Vice, Michael Mann, to, um, oh God bless John Singleton. He always John Singleton always kept us involved with yeah. something. But we went through our our um, our different classes as far as going to law sessions and understanding that music is not the same. The, same, the music is a small part of a movie business, but we got the same big budget. We get the, whatever music budget that we used to having, we get that budget. You know. But in the film in the film yeah, company, right. but. The film, but we're not the stars. Like we like like the, the the scene is the star. So as long as as long as you can get your emotions out of the way about like man, my song, man, they only gonna use this much and they gonna cut it off at this part. Who cares? Yeah, get that fuck. money. Yeah, like like we're not even just that. The scene popped off. So you gotta get back into the passion. Like yeah. and, and if I want to, I can take them chords and go redirect them things over here for something that we can put out. Yes. But right now, let's just get the scene done. <laughs> so get you want to rap? You gonna yeah. get the stage? Filming TV? You want to score it? You gonna do everything? Yeah, we produce. Wanna, yeah, we just want help help bring those visuals to life, man. Organize noise, like like we feel like um, it's money it's money in those hills for us out there doing yeah. some of that. And because of us um, having some content, that's our little way in. The fact that like you know we get to do our own stuff for one, yeah. we want to do our own thing. Cause that's why I mentioned the animated one because it's really gonna be a musical too. It's gonna be like a musical mm-hmm. because right now um, like I'm getting phone calls from. Um, Cause Bun B just went on on on, Smitty, on, on his podcast and said, to Bun B. said, "Yo, man, y'all don't know. Y'all need to ask Rico. It's a Dirty South remix with Bun B and out with UGK and Outkast. Ooh. So now I got to go to the storage spot, go through the dance. Yeah. <laughs> that's an so, NFT. That's like an NFT or something, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's like one of them things. I get some, some, get some real money. Get that off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put who's that some, out. Who's some people that we may not know? I, I know you you you've helped a lot of people, but uh-huh. who are some people that may that we may not know that you've helped? Or been connected. Like, I didn't know the, that. The Dungeon T-Bot. Affiliates. Dungeon Affiliates. Let's go through the Dungeon Affiliates. Bubba Sparks. Shout out to Bubba, Bubba Sparks. Sparks is a Dungeon Affiliate. Corrupt Young Gotti. Corrupt Young Gotti is our From Philly. Dude. From Philly. I call, dog I, call, I, call, I call shots around here. We did that album with, um, with, um. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's one of my favorite. What? I call, I call, yeah, we I did call. that song and, um. Y'all did that? Yeah. And Roscoe. Sh- and Roscoe, his little brother, Roscoe. Yeah. Because he was on the scope with Scotty Mac. Okay. Um, let me see who else is Dungeon Affiliates. Um, we have. 
actually done, done from In Vogue, actual lead singer done, she doubled back. Everybody who just doubled back when they come to Snoop Dogg, you know, like we don't have a Snoop because Snoop was just at the house, I mean, just around recently because he was going to do, he, I think he, he he just redid when I was, he might have did Black Bear Molasses with Snoop. I mean, with, with Sleepy. I think he might have <laughs> did a version of it. But but I had, I got songs with Snoop when Corrupt and Daz was bringing them through. Like this was the, it's, it's hard because it's like, that's what I'm saying, Dog Pound it's like the family. So it's almost like out of anybody, niggas like, what's up with the gang? No, you, you, you gang affiliate, you blood, you crib. I'm like, hey man, I am friends with these guys. These are <laughs> my folks. These are my folks. So like, I'm, I'm saying, I both definitely got love for these guys, but like, I like red. I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> so no, that's no. a hard thing when you're fashionable. <laughs> wow. Listen. Man, listen, 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 man, listen. We can do part two of this, like, respectfully, like, we. We just want to. We just risk. need to get y'all in Atlanta a little moment. We, yeah, we set some up, and I can get some more people over here from Atlanta, man. Because as long as y'all y'all got a, y'all got a base camp in Philly, you got one in LA. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta's, Atlanta, hey, Atlanta. Man, listen, Atlanta's looking Jeez. real good right yeah, now. We got to go yeah. front, man. Yeah, we, listen, I like that I can get shrimp and grits and sweet tea everywhere. And strippers. Everywhere. And strippers. strippers. From yeah. McDonald's. You get strippers yeah. at McDonald's too. You go anyway, get you some fish and grits and some strippers. Yeah. <laughs> we go, man. In that order. Thank in, you. Anywhere. We appreciate you, man. This, hey, is, dog, this has been a great honor, conversation. Bro. Appreciate y'all, man. Been an honor. Bro, thank you, fam. Oh, FAQ Podcast, Frequently Asked Questions with Fuzzy and Quincy. Please follow, subscribe, FAQ Podcast on YouTube, FAQ Podcast, Fuzzy and Quincy, wherever you listen. Check it out, man. Thank you, Rico. We appreciate uh, thank, you. Thank you, guys, man. FAQ, man. Organized noise. Yeah.